<laughs> Hello. <laughs> Oh, hey, Allison. Hi, Jess. <laughs> Welcome hey, back to another episode of the show with no name. <laughs> Yay. I love it. We're like, really like, we've done a lot of these now. This has been such a fun journey. Oh, it's episode 27. 27. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it is. So if you are just joining us for the first time ever, because we're streaming this into our boot camp group and it's highly possible that many people who are watching this have no idea who you are, no idea what this is, don't know that we do this weekly, have never <laughs> seen episodes one through 26. <laughs> We're also streaming it to my profile. So oh, there's yeah. probably a bunch of people in a similar situation in that direction too. So why don't we just do a little bit of a recap okay. about who we are and what we do. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> it's a million dollar question. <laughs> So actually in like I, 1980, it was a million dollar question. Now it's a billion dollar question. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you go first? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm Jess Marcy. I am a clutter coach. It's like a professional organizer turned clutter coach. <laughs> um, I have a program called Clutter Boss Academy, which is a well, it started off as a three-month program, then it was a six-month program, then it was a year-long program. Now it's like a lifetime-long program <laughs> um, where we start tackling all of the clutter in your life. So clutter, in my definition, is anything that impedes movement or motion. Mm -hmm. So it could be physical, it could be emotional, it could be anything, spiritual, it could be financial, it could be relationships. So inside of CBA, Clutter Boss Academy, because we take a fully integrated approach to tackling all of the clutter in your life. I work with many other coaches who coach inside that program. And Allison is one of my coaches. She's freaking amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love the way you encourage people because sometimes I just observe you and the way that you talk about yourself is just very matter of fact. And this is what I do. And then you go to talk about me and you're like, Oh, I'm and you're amazing. But let's just like stop for just one second to actually say that Jess is, is like phenomenal. And the things that Jess does inside of her program and what she's built is like nothing I've ever seen before. So like you are <laughs> such a cool person. <laughs> I am one of your biggest fans and you're helping so many people. And it's really, really cool. Thanks, Allison. Yeah. And I, so I am a mindset coach. I, I do, um, well, I say I'm, I'm right a mindset coach here, but like, I kind of think of myself more as a feelings coach, actually. <laughs> if you were to put it in terms that like most people know, I'm a life coach. Um, I, I work with people one-on-one -on -one, and I also coach inside of Jess's program. And I work with all of the internal clutter <laughs> in Jess's okay. terms. <laughs> Allison, you might need an identity coach. <laughs> No, I fully embrace the fact that I like to describe myself less in different ways. Yeah, it's because it's all the things together, right? And that's it's like, all the yeah, it's all the things. Mm -hmm. So if you are joining us for the first time ever, let us know in the comments, because we would love to personally welcome you to the show. Allison and I have never met. <laughs> <laughs> but we do love each other <laughs> so much. In, yeah, hopefully when we meet in person, we'll still be like, oh my gosh, you're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we can fool each other that much digitally. No. No. <laughs> so we decided to start, oh shoot. We decided to start a podcast every week solely for the purpose of hanging out together for an hour every week and inviting you along on our journey. Jess Chata in the house. Welcome. <laughs> so basically, so we just hang out. We talk about totally all things related to everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, we have, we've realized that there's just so much overlap and similarities between the things that hang up all of our people and so it's like it's all it's all the same it all has to do a lot with um how we're attached to things how we struggle releasing things how we categorize information inside of us and how we work with all the stuff in our personal experiences so that's we just come on here to kind of we kind of come on here to really like have fun with each other. This is like a way for us to see each other every week. But also I feel like we drop a whole lot of truth bombs in here. So yeah, there's some totally good do. it's 100%. Yeah. It's really, 
it's humorous, it's deep, and it is the show with no name. <laughs> <laughs> it is. But we also have a subtitle every week, so depending on whatever our topic was. Yes. <laughs> it's the show with only a subtitle. <laughs> It's fun. It's fun. So what, All right. So, so what <laughs> you've got a lot going on this week. You have had a boot camp. You do boot camps from time to time that are really cool. How how has your week been? <laughs> it's like a roller coaster of emotions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so when this boot camp in particular has uh, over two thousand people in it, and it's clutter boot camp. It's mm -hmm. the, the basics of how to start tackling your clutter, how to get rid of the shame, how to get rid of the judgment, how to be realistic. Like we're not decluttering overnight. Like, you know, you're not going to declutter your house head to toe and like be totally great and ready to label things on day two. Actually, mm -hmm. one of my coaches was <laughs> in another clutter boot camp because she just wanted to kind of check out what other people were doing. And she said, day one was declutter your house and day two was label your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to tell you, if it has taken you 35 years to accumulate all that clutter, it's not going away in one day. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's, you know, we really, we set the foundation so that after boot camp, you can move forward uh, and have success, right? Without judging yourself, understanding your journey. The thing with clutter boot camp and why it's so emotional is at the beginning of decluttering. And maybe you've been decluttering for 35 years, but you haven't accomplished decluttering yet. That's okay. We talk about that too. Um, but at the beginning of this process, many people come into boot camp very overwhelmed because clutter is very overwhelming, very stressed. And it's really fascinating to witness how quickly we move along. But in the beginning, because there's stress and because there's overwhelm, it's it, there's a lot of emotion, right? And it's not all positive emotion because as Allison will tell you, 50, 50, mm -hmm. <laughs> we're in the 50, 50 world, right? 50% of our emotions are quote unquote positive and 50% are quote unquote negative. Yeah. And it's, you know, a lot of that, I get a lot of comments, overwhelmingly positive, but the negatives rise to the top. Um, a lot of people share things they've never shared before. There's a, we encourage a lot of vulnerability um, and which, actually has been sort of fascinating for me to watch this week, but it's, it's a roller coaster. And then on top of that, all the emotion and everything, our Facebook group is insanely active with thousands upon thousands of comments and, you know, likes and reactions and all of the things. And just like trying to keep up with all of that is also, so it's a, like a lot of work. Like I've been sitting, sitting down in front of my computer, like 24 hours a day for a week, which is not healthy. I don't recommend doing that. So <laughs> <laughs> it's such a big endeavor. It's, it's a whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's also such an amazing thing that you offer to people because um, it, it's, I think a lot of people don't even know how to begin like even stepping to, into this idea of, oh, I could, I could do something different. I, it doesn't have to be this way. So it's a really awesome starting point that you have to even get people like in the door of how to start thinking about this for themselves and their own experience. So it's really cool. Thanks. It's been, uh, you know, this is almost two years since my first boot camp since I launched, launched my first boot camp and you know, in the beginning, I did a couple of free boot camps and they were just so much. I had no team. I had no support. I, it was just me. <laughs> uh, so I stopped doing free boot camps and then I switched to paid boot camps, like just low, you know. So here's a fascinating thing, Allison, because I know you you were going to ask this. But <laughs> when I do a free boot camp, I have the same, I spend the same amount on ads every time, regardless of whether it's a free boot camp or a paid boot camp. When I do a free boot camp, I get between 2,000 and 5,000 people signing up. When I do a paid boot camp starting at $1, <laughs> seriously, because uh, I've done everything. I've done $1, I've done $8, I've done $10, I've done $19, I've done all the different like amounts. Uh, when I do a paid boot camp, I get between 100 and 200 people signing up. It's like significantly different. So yeah. that's just sort of fascinating to me is that we'll take a risk on something that's free because it, maybe then we don't have to be fully engaged. So if it doesn't work, it's no big deal. We didn't lose a dollar. But if mm -hmm. you 
put $1 behind that and ask people to commit $1, we get, you know, what a tiny percentage of the signups is really, really interesting. Real quick, this is totally off topic, but am I choppy to you? Cause you're kind of choppy to me. No, am I choppy to, am I choppy to you people? <laughs> hey well, viewers, <laughs> are you having a hard time watching? <laughs> it could be me. I'm having really fun internet problems and I'm actually going to, I'm going to press a button and hopefully it doesn't kick me off, but let me see. <laughs> I'm good. See, they're saying I'm good. You're a little choppy to me all the time, but Ooh, Jess says I'm a little choppy. Hmm. Both are good. Tara says, I think Both it really depends on our personal internet connections. So. Okay. Okay. Good. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's such an interesting, um, thought because I've noticed there, there's so much of our own, we're all geared towards this idea of like, we have to hold tightly to our money and we have to like, it's all a safety mechanism by our brain. So any, any, any ideas of like, I have to be really careful where I spend my money or I have to make totally sure this is exactly what I want and I'm just going to hold my money here until I, until I fully commit. It's all kind of from this energy of scarcity, which is our entire culture. Like all of humanity, it's what it's, what's hardwired into our primal brain of what we're even working with, with our factory settings. But it does kind okay, of- Although Target has gotten past that, it helps me. <laughs> <laughs> your weekly target run is all about not having like you know it's like here we'll spend as much money as we can you come in here for one dollar while you're spending 100 <laughs> yeah well that's uh, that's because the the mindset of that is you're you're lacking in a different place right your scarcity right. is in right. these things that you own so it's right. always like scarcity is just always such an energy that is just undercover under all the things but it is so interesting how i mean i do i've done this you've probably done this too where i didn't actually have it was either a like a small amount that i'm paying to something or or a free thing and i don't invest in it because it it's it, there's not the connection isn't made between like my motivation and my energy to do it <laughs> because i just haven't really actually given much to be a part of it so it's such an um it's just a really fascinating thing to kind of watch especially yeah it's i mean it, truly whether we have 100 people who paid a dollar or 2000 people who didn't pay anything we have about the same activity in our groups right so the wow. dollar does make a difference <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> but the, you know i I committed for the first six months of 2022 to offer free boot camps. I have already now kind of changed that a little bit after this boot camp and decided that I am going to offer free boot camps if it's your first boot camp. And then after that, it's going to be $20 just because there's such a commitment of time on the end of my coaches and my mm -hmm. time. And it's, it really is, I'm reminded again, how much work it takes to run a boot camp. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I always, it's this fine line, right. Of trying to figure out how to make a profit in my business while also offering tremendous value to people who come in. And I, it's really, a, it's one of the trickiest things I've ever had to figure out I'm going on year three now. And I haven't figured it out yet <laughs> when I do, I'll let you know. <laughs> Maybe it's not a destination of like, this is where I've totally figured it out. <laughs> it is a destination when you're profitable and making money. That's the destination. <laughs> when you're like living like day to day, like, can I pay my bills? Like, that's not profitable. It, But <laughs> it's all right. I was reminded at the end of this boot camp. So boot camp officially ended yesterday. We're shutting down the group on Sunday. Um, mm -hmm. I was reminded by the universe because I got stuck on in the middle of this week. I got stuck on thinking about, you know, can I pay my bills and all like and how much time I'm spending and, you know, all like the energy that goes into it, mm -hmm. all the questioning, all of the, you know, because I get stuck in that energy sometimes, especially when some people maybe send me hate mail. <laughs> 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 really that it really it I you know as much as I try and not take it personally I do um I I got stuck in that energy and then I got a big giant slap in the face from the universe yesterday reminding me 
of the bigger picture here. And that's mm -hmm. what I really want to focus on with this podcast uh, is the bigger picture because mm -hmm. there is a much bigger picture that has nothing to do with my personal profit margins whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Let's talk uh, about that bigger picture. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so at the end of boot camp yesterday, and this has happened here and there in the past, but not like it happened yesterday. Mm. And it all happened in like the period of a couple of hours. I had so a, a, a large number of people reach out to me and say, I read somebody's post in boot camp. Their story spoke to me and I want to sponsor them moving forward in one of your programs. Uh, and this happened like multiple times last night. And in every single case, it was complete strangers, complete strangers, totally anonymous people, totally different people, totally strangers. Uh, I mean, it was all, it wasn't like one person's story, like resonated with like a million, like all everyone. It was mm -hmm. like it, these connections that people felt were I don't, I, I don't even know how to describe it. I mean, they, they felt connected to somebody, to a stranger that they met on the internet, just like you and I, Allison, <laughs> and so connected that they wanted to support their journey moving forward. It made me, by the end of the night, of course, I had been, well, I've been up for like days. <laughs> <laughs> I'm exhausted. There's so much energy. There's so much everything. and. Mm. I just, I, I was just like broke down in tears because I was so moved by so many people extending such generosity to complete strangers because their story spoke to them. And I was, I've been thinking about this a lot. Like what, what, what was like, what does that, how does that happen? Um, and I really think it comes down to the power of being vulnerable and mm -hmm. when, you know, so much of what we see is filtered through the lens of well, filters, <laughs> like literal filters, like Instagram filters, Facebook mm -hmm. filters. I'm only picking the best picture. I'm only picking the, you know, the happiest story to share. I'm only like, you mm -hmm. know, as my kids would say, flexing on something that's like <laughs> <laughs> what we see in the, either we see horrible news, nothing good, or we see on social media, like the total FOMO storyline, right? The total mm -hmm. FOMO, everything like fear of missing out. Like, you know, vacations, like the, the feet in the sand with like the pina colada and the ocean in the background or the beautiful holiday gathering, or, uh, you know, I use this filter when I do my Instagram stories where it like smooths out my skin and gives me like fake eyelashes. <laughs> <laughs> we never see people being fully vulnerable. Mm -hmm. We never hear the whole story. We never feel comfortable enough saying what's going on. Like, how can I help you? What, like, why are you showing up like this right now? Is it because you have a whole story that you just feel like you can't share with anyone? And in boot camp, this one of the things that made this boot camp so emotional was that there was so much vulnerability shared live on our calls and inside our group. And for some people, that didn't sit well. Mm -hmm. But for the vast majority of people, it actually made them feel so connected that they offered to support somebody's journey moving forward. And that was the universe slapping me in the face and saying, there is a bigger picture here. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> don't forget. <laughs> yeah. I love that. That's so beautiful. It was incredible. It was incredible. What a, what a cool thing to be the one the, like you get to to have you have the whole story within you like you're the one that started it you're the one that like has has worked through all the beginning initial hard things to make this a program to make this a, a thing and you're getting to see such beautiful fruit yes and that was that was the remind the friendly reminder that i got yesterday was this is so much bigger this is the why this is the you know like the rest of it will fall into place as mm -hmm. everything does 
and mm-hmm. having trust in the future, which is what I preach all the time, Allison. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> You need to have faith that the future is going to provide. Um, And sometimes you fall out of that faith space. And it's nice when the universe comes back and says, hey, hey, hey. (laughs) (laughs) Just like that. (laughs) Hey, hey, hey. (laughs) (laughs) I have those hey, hey, hey's from the universe. One of the um, the focus things that we've been doing in Clutter Boss Academy, I do this Monday morning motivational live stream. I just started it in 2022. It was like one of our updates for 2022. And the first one that I did was all about what if it turns out better than you ever expected? What if it turns out better than you ever expected? And trying to stay in that space has been so important for me because what if it turns out better than you ever expected? Mm-hmm. It almost always does. That's such, I love that. We're, we're so used to feeling like we have to almost protect ourselves from the future. And it's like, I'm going to just plan for the worst. I'm going to expect the worst. And then like, you know, then I'm going to be braced for it. Right. I won't have to hurt so bad, (laughs) but really living in the space of expectancy for all the good that could be and all the good that's that's just going to come to you. And also like having the flexibility to not know what that needs to look like. I think that's a lot. Yes, of like, that's so key. Because when mm-hmm. we put an expectation on what it looks like, we're disappointed every single time. And we talk about expectations yeah. a lot, but expectations yeah. need to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Expectations make us very disappointed (laughs) yeah and very rigid like very yes tight like we could break so easily right my monday morning motivation this week was about the power of flexibility and the pasta that is either like uncooked and it breaks when Uh it bends or it's cooked and it's nice and flexible (laughs) i love that (laughs) so we've been saying don't forget to be like a wet noodle (laughs) (laughs) flexibility was one of the very first words that I ever um like put up on a a wall to to see regularly because when words are so so powerful and for me not even just full sentences but like a single word so I had like a words that make my energy be what I want them to be and I had that list on my wall and I accessed that regularly for like a good eight months and that was one of my words wet noodle no flexible, <laughs> flexible and agile <laughs> just like a wet noodle <laughs> or like <laughs> Like uh, agile, there's so many beautiful pictures for that. That is more than just a wet noodle. <laughs> wet, wet noodle doesn't quite do it for me, but I understand the illustration. <laughs> right, right, right. It makes you laugh. That raises your vibrational energy. <laughs> That's true. Yes, I love it. Um, okay, so I also I want to talk more about vulnerability, but before mm-hmm. we do that, Allison, can I also share another incredible incredible story that came out of this week that I had nothing to do with, but um, okay. So Amy and she, and she wrote this in the comments, so I'm going to share it. Amy is one of our incredible coaches and life mentors and inspirational humans. Mm -hmm. And Amy was bed bound for 15 years And then she was in a wheelchair and then she was on two crutches and then one crutch. And Amy, feel free to correct my story if I'm getting any of the details incorrect. Amy, out of the blue, posted this week in Clutter Boss Academy and said, I walked a mile. Mm -hmm. I walked a mile. She has been working on walking little bits at a time to help exercise her dog and exercise herself. and. She hit a mile. She hit a freaking mile. Okay. If somebody tells you you can't do it, go talk to Amy. (laughs) We have a podcast where where Amy and I are talking. It was one of the ones you weren't able to be at. So you can go, you can go find that and hear Amy's story. It is truly incredible. Truly. Truly. 
That is so cool. We're so you happy. A mile. Me. That's amazing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yay! <laughs> We're all celebrating you. We are like so excited for you, Amy. I, I just, you blow me away every day. I love it. Yeah, really, Amy, your story is like so, <laughs> people who who feel like things seem impossible just need to watch your story. Yes, yeah. yes, I agree so inspirational. So the universe is talking every second. <laughs> always. always. There, there's always, there's always stuff for us to hear. Nothing is impossible. Absolutely nothing. That's so great. And there's even that silly saying, the word itself says I'm possible. <laughs> <laughs> it is true. <laughs> It is true. I know. I know. All right. So let's, Allison, I would love to get your thoughts on vulnerability. Why do you feel like it's harder to be vulnerable now than ever before? Or do you feel like it's easier? Or do you feel like it hasn't changed? You don't have like a, maybe you don't have an opinion on whether it's easier to be vulnerable now, but there's power behind sharing your story and being vulnerable. Serious mm -hmm. power. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know that I have an opinion on whether it's changed. I don't, I don't know that it's changed because I think people are just people and, and we've all, there's, it's been human people for this entire time. Right. And so I think that vulnerability <laughs> is just, <laughs> vulnerability is just, um, it's the thing about it is that it's a skill and we're not, and I feel like when we're, I mean, when we're babies, we come with it innate and in, innate in us, but then depending on what family of origin we have or what things we learn right off the bat and how we interact with who we think we are and who we think the world is and what it ex expects of us. That's the stuff that kind of starts to dictate how we understand anything about vulnerability. So well, because a lot of times we're taught vulnerability is weakness. Right. But I don't think that we're born with that under, like, I don't think like when we're born, yeah. it's vulnerability. Exactly. We're totally vulnerable as infants. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and like, if you're, we are born with this understanding of, I don't close myself off from other people. Other people is, is where I have connection and warmth. And like, this is, this Support is what I need. And this and is love and and yeah. Yeah. So it's really just like the things that are, that the conditioning, whatever conditioning we receive is what teaches us to express that or think about it differently or that it's weakness and relabel it and reframe it. And I don't know, it's, it's such a, there, there's so many common themes about how vulnerability is suppressed throughout humanity. And when you can start to express your vulnerability, whatever that looks like, actually, I would love to know in the comments, what does being vulnerable look like or mean to you? I'm curious about that. Mm -hmm. I think vulnerability has so much to do with safety. And I think that we learn a lot about um, being unsafe very early on. And so when it's anything like, I mean, vulnerability is like our ability to have an, it's like a level of honesty. And sometimes we can't even have that level of honesty with ourselves because there's so much like that's so unsafe, right? Like we just got to keep it down and making it, that means something else. And, and I shouldn't do this and I shouldn't do that. And, and the way in which we make it all like, it's almost like we're living on edge all the time. So you can't really have that vulnerability. So I think it has so much to do with the safety you feel with yourself and the safety that then you build with other people and able and how you're able to express things. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I agree entirely. It's all about safety. And I think when it comes to our personal stories and what's going on in our life, we're afraid we're going to be judged if we're vulnerable mm -hmm. and share the truth. So we just put the Instagram filter on and have longer eyelashes. Like <laughs> <laughs> right. Whatever it is. Actually, I do that just for fun, not because I'm feeling. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's because I'm too lazy to go get eyelashes done. <laughs> so, <laughs> the laziness thing is not being vulnerable. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we have uh, in the comments, being vulnerable to me is one is being 100% transparent, honesty, down to earth qualities. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Um, I think in the proper space, vulnerability is possible so much more. Safety is the key, right? You have to be safe so mm -hmm. you can be vulnerable. Being vulnerable to me is opening up my heart and letting someone see the true, more soft-hearted side of me instead of the hard and tough exterior that I put up for the world to see. Yep. Mm -hmm. Being yeah. vulnerable is the unknown. Yeah, that's really, really a good, succinct way of saying that. And our brain is terrified. Very insightful, of Robin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Our brain is so scared of the unknown too. So it makes so much sense that vulnerability would be a thing that's like, you got to, you got to armor up. You got to protect yourself. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. And look, when you are vulnerable, um, beautiful things can happen. Placing genuineness and interdependence above image and fitting in. Mm, that's a good one also. Yeah, is that the good. actual, <laughs> that sounds like an actual dictionary definition. <laughs> that's too good. <laughs> that is really good. Genuineness and interdependence. I love the word interdependence. <laughs> I, I am myself am a recovering codependent. So, so I had like, I had a, a period in my life where it was like, everything is codependency. <laughs> so, so the vulnerability in that was kind of learning how to come back in, in this, understand this interdependence. But so also so much of that has to do with like everything that I talk about literally all the time, which is what is, what's mine, my responsibility, what's someone else's and someone else's responsibility, because that's the only way that you can have honest interdependency that doesn't become codependency. We could have a whole show on interdependency versus codependency. I feel like I'm not an expert in that area. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know that I'm, I, I think it's like so much, it's just so much about, um, it's like, I keep coming back to the word honesty because it keeps, it, it's, it's so much about how we are being honest with ourselves and being honest with like what belongs to me and what belongs to you and, and how I'm actually having like really sneaky undercover motivations and how you may be also, because that's the kind of stuff that really ties us into tangled messes with codependency and enmeshment. <laughs> do not enmesh yourself in codependency <laughs> you'd be in a tangled mess <laughs> and it's like also oh how we're taught to do relationship too that's the thing about it like interdependency is like much more clean it's just it there's it's it's much more neutral and not like subversive in any in any, in any thought processes or what you're trying to get out of things or out of people how do you think codependency is connected to clutter? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> it's out of curiosity. <laughs> codependency is like in everything. It is, it is so in everything because, well, think about, think about the things that people say to you about why can't I get rid of this thing? Right. What are some of the things people say to you about? I, I can't get rid of this. This is a question I get every single day. Why can't yeah. I let go of what yeah. I like put it, you know, fill in the blank. Why can't I let go of fill in the blank? Yeah. Yeah. It's because it all has stories behind it. Everything has a story and we get so codependency is just uh, it's just attachment. Right. It's just how we're attached to our, how we're finding safety. Everything comes back to safety. I'm totally curious. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's, so it's about how we're attaching to things. And a lot of times, I mean, it can look all kinds of, you, you know, all the stories, it can look all kinds of different ways. So it can be something that's like, I was given this 
and this is how I connect to this other person, or I have a guilt or a shame about getting rid of it, or um, like I'm going to make someone else feel bad. If you ever think I'm going to, I have to alter what I'm doing because I'm going to make someone else feel bad. That's like hints of codependency. <laughs> Because we're, we all do this thing where we're trying to like be the ones in charge of other people's feelings and emotions and then expect other people to be in charge of our feelings and emotions. Like, why are you making me feel this way? It, so we do this like such a messy like crisscross of like, I'm taking care of this person all the time and then I'm not being taken care of. Well, yeah, because you are the only one who can actually make you feel anything. And they are the only one who can actually make themselves feel anything. And I think that clutter just becomes, you know, it's just like anything else that it's a physical manifestation of. It's just becomes part of that mix. It's just, what's well, just one of the tangible parts of it. And a lot of it is very intangible. I'm having some aha moments about the hate mail I got this week. Yeah. <laughs> I feel a little codependent with that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, your, your, your nervous system is responding to that too. Yes, it is. It's yeah. in fight or flight. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. I want to fight and other times I want to bury myself in my bed and hide. Yeah. <laughs> that would yeah. be flight. <laughs> yeah. So, so everything like at the most raw level of humanity, our nervous system responses are, are, our biggest vulnerability because our nervous system responses are, are triggering all these different things happening inside of us. And it's terrifying and it's scary. And our body is like on fire in whatever ways that it goes and the fight, flight or freeze or fawn. And so our immediate reactions are always like, I need to make this stop and I need to like make it go away or like fix it or overthink all the things so I can solve all the problems so that this will go away from inside me. That's just a very normal response for your body. But the difference is that it doesn't have to be um, attached. It doesn't have to actually be attached to the other things. It can be like, oh, my nervous system is having a response. I can soothe my nervous system. Just me taking care of my body. I always like to think of it like, um, like, like my body is a colicky baby and I'm going to soothe it the way I soothe my daughter with all, you know, when she was colicky and I'm just going to take care of myself and, and not make it attached to all the other stuff. Like when you can get yourself to a more self-regulated, self-regulated, neutral feeling, then you can actually decide, okay, what do I want to do with this information? And maybe what I want to do with this information is I don't want to read this information ever. I mean, that is an option. <laughs> I did actually, I have my virtual assistant who does most of my reading for me. <laughs> she's my, she's a good filter, but you know, some of it still gets through. Right. And listen, you guys don't need to feel sorry that I experienced this. This is a growing, it's, it's growth for me, right? Mm -hmm. Like it really, really is. If I am going to continue to put out stuff that goes in front of thousands of people, this is par for the course. And I need to figure out how to separate the emotions and the feelings and the circumstances and all that stuff that Allison talks about all the time. <laughs> and the, and this is good practice, right? Cause mm -hmm. it's just going to get more and more. It's like a percentage. It's all numbers. It's like straight up math. Like if you are yeah. in front of, you know, 10,000 people, one person's going to send you something nasty. Right. And so if you're going to be yeah. in front of a hundred thousand people, it's going to be more, I can't actually do the math, but like, I know it's math. <laughs> <laughs> well, have you've read, I, I assume you've read the arena quote, haven't you? That really famous quote about being in the arena. No, I don't think oh my gosh, What have you read any of Brene Brown stuff? No. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what is going on right now? <laughs> I have I have no time to read Allison. <laughs> I don't either. I just I love Brene Brown. Let me see if I can. But I am um, going to be driving later for some time so I could listen to an audiobook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Daring Greatly was one of her um original books. It has this quote in the very front cover. And it is um kind of the the topic for how she handles the whole book. The whole book is her thing is vulnerability. Like that's her entire thing. She's actually like a, a shame and vulnerability researcher. <laughs> so oh, her, look, everyone is commenting. I'm the only person in the world that has not heard this. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to read you this quote and you're going to be like blown mind. Okay. All right. So this original quote, quote was Theodore Roosevelt said it. Okay. 
It's called the man in the arena. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. Hmm. So the the being in the arena, whenever you are in the arena, like you're actually out there doing the stuff like you are, and the bigger you grow and the more that stuff that you have, the more you're going to hear critics from the cheap seats saying yeah. stuff. To oh you, yeah, right? totally, totally. Yeah. And it's just like part of par for the course, like that's how it goes. But the the fact that you are where you are is what actually makes that so much easier to even think about. Like, oh, the fact that you're that I'm even getting more of this kind of a mail from these people <laughs> is 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 just like it's evidence of look where I am, look what I'm doing, and look what an Im impact I'm having. Yeah, it's uh right. It's evidence, and you know, I mean. It just, it is what it is. It's good practice for me to learn to deal well or better yeah. or differently or appropriately or improve or whatever, whatever it is. It's all, you know, I think it's about how you're going to learn how to take care of yourself within it. Yes, probably. <laughs> Thank <laughs> God I have a hot tub. That's all that I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great way to take care of yourself. It's like the yeah. self-care that matters the most to me. <laughs> I sit in the hot tub and I look at the stars and I'm like, okay. Woo. <laughs> yeah. 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 There's, there's, there's so, I feel like we learn so much in just like the quantities that, that we can hold. Right. And you must, you, you must have become in a really long way because you're able to have these as lessons for yourself now you're at a place now where you're able to hold this and you're able to process it and it's, it's just a matter of how can what do you need to give yourself how do you take care of the things that you're feeling in your responses to things and what do you need yeah those are all really good questions that everyone should ponder yeah, yeah. everybody everybody <laughs> if this is what i do for myself all day long <laughs> When, I, when I'm like, <laughs> oh, so-and-so said this, or my kids did that. And I'm like, oh yeah, what do I need right now? How do I come back to like a grounding within myself? What do I need for safety? What exactly is making me feel the things that I'm feeling? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All good questions. <laughs> I had something else to talk to you about, Allison, but I have forgotten what it is. <laughs> <laughs> so also, I have Sorry. no memory. So <laughs> that's okay. I don't remember things either. I have to write them down. They just, yeah. Like, yeah. I don't even have a pen here right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are you up to? How was your week? I So, we heard all about boot camp. What happened <laughs> in Allison World? <laughs> I honestly, whenever anybody asks me that, I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> what, did, what did I do this week? It, I, I, I don't hold the things in my memory very well. And it, so we're we're back into homeschooling after the break. And I feel like getting back in homeschooling has been um, like very, like, just like, let's just do this really light. Let's keep sleeping in. So I'm, I'm actually been thinking a lot about how much it doesn't matter that things need to look a certain way, <laughs> which, I, which I have been enjoying a lot because <laughs> we all started getting into this really shifted um, time of day where we like slept in more and then like the kids were staying up a lot later. And I'm like, does it really matter actually 
Like it doesn't actually matter. We can do math at nine o'clock at night if we want to, and it's okay. Like it doesn't doesn't really matter. So I I feel like I kind of almost feel like I'm cheating. <laughs> like <laughs> like I'm not. I this is a recurring thing I've had. Like I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do, and then like that's just BS, and I don't believe that, and I don't subscribe to those thoughts. So <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's, it's been kind of an interesting thing. Yeah. It's the getting up early is that's, I mean, there's like so much research about how for children, especially the older they get, like into their teen years and stuff, how it's so bad for, it's like, so like unhealthy for them to be waking up so early because they can't go to sleep at like a normal time at night because they're like, I mean, my younger one, who's 12, she is up like (laughs) so late. So she can't not be, it's like, go to sleep. Like I can't. (laughs) That's how my daughter is. She's almost 12 and it's literally the same thing. It's like, she just can't sleep and like, well, I guess I can't really hold that against you. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. We're trying all the things. I know. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Um, Yeah, but okay. So in the comments, our public schools in my area changed high school start time to nine or nine thirty. That's amazing. We start at seven twenty-five. I mean, (laughs) crazy. It's crazy. That's funny. So that just sort of affirms because I'm I'm just I feel like I'm just really living. I'm just living in the moments day to day, and I'm like, we're just gonna do what works today and then we're going to do what works tomorrow. And I mean, who doesn't like to sleep in? (laughs) (laughs) I wake up at like 520 every morning. I'm like, oh my, I'm like, what's going on? Like like, immediately start like processing a million things. (laughs) And I think other people are much more successful at sleeping in than I am. (laughs) Yeah. I don't do that. I feel like if I did that, that I'd I'd have all this time. Here's the only other thing though. I'm finding that I, I've kind of lost like that my, my alone time has sort of disappeared <laughs> and I, I need to, I want to go in and start getting more creative about how I find it again. And that started, like, I've started to really like notice it taking a toll on me. Like I really need to be alone because all of the people are home. Like all of the people in my home are home <laughs> <laughs> and I need to find some spaces where it's like, I don't have to do anything and I don't have to see anyone. So that's been a little bit harder. And I used to find those times in the morning, but I, just, I can't do it right now. We're all on this shifted time schedule. Have you heard of a miracle morning, Allison? <laughs> I have. But um, what I know that you guys do this a lot. Why don't you give everybody the the lowdown on that? So Miracle Morning is, it's actually a book. So if you're into reading, <laughs> you can read the book. Um, it's a, basically, it's a series of habits that you participate in in the morning. And it's six distinct things. It's, um, it's like sitting in silence, mm-hmm. like meditation or prayer, um, doing affirmations, visualization, exercise, reading for self-improvement and journaling. And which, okay, all six of those things are really good things to do anyway, right? (laughs) We can all agree that any of those six things are going to help you in your life, period. Mm -hmm. Doing them all together in the morning is just a, you know, you wake up a little bit early and you set yourself up for a really good day by doing, going through the miracle morning process. Um, For me, I've never done an hour long miracle morning. That seems like way too long, but Again, I also like to life hack basically everything. So I'm like, how short can I do this in? How short of a time can I do this in? Even six minutes, even doing each thing for one minute makes a significant difference in your life. So even if you can get up 10 minutes early and do the whole ritual of a miracle morning in just a short amount of time without overthinking it, without trying to be perfect, just Mm -hmm. getting each element done, it makes a really, really big difference and gives you that alone time. That resonates a lot because I think if I were to think I have 60 seconds to do something, it would definitely bring my focus into like, okay, this is what I'm doing right now for this time and not trying to overthink it. Right. (laughs) And then you can also combine something. So you could do exercise, like you could walk 
while doing affirmations and visualizations. So you can like do all three at once, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You could listen to a book on tape while you're walking so you get your exercise and your reading in. Like <laughs> this is exactly how I've lived my whole life is what I I must love the life hacking ideas too. Cause like what can I combine to do them? <laughs> exactly. That's, funny. that's one of your that's one of the things about our brain though, is it likes efficiency. So that's actually one of the motivations is it likes to it it really gets excited by the fact that we combine things. Absolutely. There was, you know, when I first came across Miracle Mornings, it was uh, quite a while ago, like many, many years ago. And I had a good Miracle Morning practice that my kids were really young. Um, so they, you know, that was like one of those things, I can't do this because they're going to wake up, they're going to interrupt me. So then it became, okay, if you wake up at this time when I'm in my Miracle Morning, you're going to do Miracle Morning with me. So <laughs> So that worked out actually pretty well, um, our flexibility there. But it yes. was one of like the practices that I've had in my past that made a significant difference. And of course, I stopped doing it for years. And then I started just sharing the information with friends. And in CBA, we talk about, you know, these like implementing this little mini practice in the morning if it feels right for you. Um, mm -hmm. And a couple of CBAers have implemented miracle mornings and seen tremendous differences in their lives mm. just from that intentional start to their day. Um, so really, can you, you know, give an example of like the minute of visualization, what you would do for that? Do you like yeah, visualize so the day or like, so visualization is really just, um, in your mind, seeing your future, how you want it to be like mm -hmm. literally going through like you know, this is what it looks like, because the more that you can direct your focus and attention towards a specific outcome in all different ways, then the easier it is to embrace that outcome when it happens. And so we'll just take an example of clutter. A lot of times, if you have a lot of clutter, when you clear your space, it feels uncomfortable for any number of reasons. Mm -hmm. It could be because it reminds you of something in your past that is not positive. Mm -hmm. It could be just because you're not used to having a clear space. Like that just looks different. It feels different, right? Um, and actually, just as an aside to this, when people clear their spaces, you know, you get used to having things in a certain spot. So you get mm -hmm. used to like being physically in your space in a certain way. So if there's always boxes and whatever, you your body knows how to navigate that, even if the lights are off. Like if you have clutter, you can make it from your bed to your bathroom at night knowing where to step or knowing how to step. So there's so many ways that when you clear your space, everything becomes different. Like even how you stand up and move around in that space is totally, totally different. And you might rebel against that because it's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So one thing that you can do in terms of visualization is actually visualize yourself in that clear space, getting up, walking around, moving around. Maybe you have a hallway that's blocked off because of clutter. Visualize yourself walking down that hallway. So when it actually happens, you are more comfortable with it because it has, you've been visualizing it, right? So it, mm -hmm. it just kind of helps you adjust your comfort zone. I love that. Right? So that would yeah. be, now you can do visualization for absolutely anything. I mean, yeah. You know, a lot of what people do miracle mornings for is like success in their like what you know, financial success, business success, whatever. Um, but I, you know, I like to apply it to your whole life. I mean, and really focus on how you can use this as a tool to embrace something when it happens. Um, so you can sit for one minute, set your timer, and visualize yourself with, with your clear hallway walking up and down the hallway, right? Like it is that I simple, but it. it's super powerful. Yes. That is awesome. That is that that's really that's really how we turn our focus into like the space of the things that we want. Because without that, the, the what we want still feels like this kind of void and like unknown, a little bit scary area. But when we're turning our mind like, oh, look, it looks like this. It looks like this. This is what I'm seeing in my mind. You can do it with like relationships. You can do it with your business, you can do it with anything that you want at all. And the, when, when you're constantly looking at that, that's really, it's what actually does like this quantum leaping because it puts yeah. you there in that space. You actually start doing the things that you would do in that space. 
Yeah. Yeah. There's a whole quantum physics connection to all of mm -hmm. this, which because I don't do well, I have never done well in physics. And also <laughs> I've delivered these lessons live and I'm like, is that what it is? Is it a cell? Is it a nucleus? It is an electron. Is it like, what are we talking about? What is the term? I know the visual. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot well, label the parts. <laughs> most people just need the visual anyway. I wish that I could. I, I wish that I knew all this stuff like scientifically and I can explain exactly how all these things work. But I, I, I don't know them to that degree <laughs> because I'm actually more of an artist at heart. So like I could draw you the picture, but that actually is what works for me anyway. So that's when I fall back on. This is what I tell people all the time. You don't need to believe me. You just need to trust me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's my favorite saying. You don't need to believe me. You just need to trust me. I know the outcome is possible for you, whether or not you believe it. You need to have a little faith in me and trust that I'm going to get you from point A to point B because yeah. you're taking a big quantum leap right now. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's awesome. I love yeah. that. So we're at our hour, Allison. <laughs> Always goes so fast. Goes so fast. <laughs> um, next week, I'm going to be uh, not home. <laughs> oh, you going backpacking? No, no, I'm going on a trip to someplace warmer. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. I'm, I have to see what time my flights are. Maybe I can still do our podcast. But if okay. we're not here next, oh, maybe you can get a, a guest. Uh, maybe. Yeah, I could maybe do that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we'll figure it out. We'll, we'll talk about it. We'll talk. We'll, we'll let we'll you talk. guys know. We'll connect. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Thank you well, for your fun. incredibly insightful thoughts about everything. And well, you as well. You as well. It's always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. To everyone who has stuck with us for the last 56 minutes and 44 seconds, all we can say is thank you. We love you. <laughs> we love you. Go manifest the impossible because it is possible. Even the word says I'm possible. <laughs> the best. Have an incredible week, everyone. Goodbye. Goodbye.